Marvel's Spider-Man 2 comes with a host of new abilities, combat moves, traversal mechanics, and some neat new spider gadgets. All of these are improved by leveling up and putting points into one of three skill trees. That's right, this time around you'll be putting skill points in Spider-Man skill tree, the other Spider-Man skill tree, and a shared Spider-Men skill tree. In this video, we'll go over the best skills that you should unlock first to rid New York of, you know, all the bad things that always seem to be happening there. Alongside the expanded world of Marvel's New York with the Queens and Brooklyn boroughs, some of the most exciting new additions to the game come in the form of enhanced traverse options, though you'll need to invest in them first. Via the shared skill tree between Miles and Peter, you'll want to head down the middle path as soon as possible, starting with slingshot launch, then loop-de-loop, -loop, followed by corner tether, the spider jump and spider dash, and finally the aerial escapades upgrade. By snagging these, you'll make your navigation of the city so much more dynamic, fluid, and even more entertaining. The biggest standout of the bunch for us is Slingshot Launch, which allows Spider-Man to slingshot launch anywhere without the need of a super slingshot launch pad, though of course, not as far. Loop-de-loop -loop gives Spider-Man the ability to do a full loop from his dive swing, propelling him forward with a bunch of speed. Corner Turn makes cornering buildings incredibly stylish. And finally, Spider Jump and Spider Dash are excellent ways of gaining instant height and forward momentum, respectively, and immediately deploying your web wings after a Spider Dash is one of the fastest ways to get around the game, with the Aerial Escapade skill allowing you to do those two abilities much more often. New to Spider-Man 2 are the dual dials on the HUD that act as hotkeys that let you activate various abilities, each unique to Miles and to Peter. While you'll begin the game with only a couple, you'll need to invest your skill points to unlock the rest. This will give you as many options within combat as possible, which can be invaluable as you encounter tougher enemies further into the game. Here's a few standouts. For Peter, we highly recommend grabbing Spider Rush as it propels you forward, damaging all the enemies in your path. Spend another point on Tornado, and Spider Rush will even pull in enemies that may have been out of range of the flurry. Another great one is Spider Shock. While Miles may have Chain Lightning, Peter's Spider Shock sees his mechanical spider legs shoot his foes with electrical web lines, which also leaves them vulnerable to attacks. Upgrade Spider Shock to have it hit more enemies. Partway through the main story, Peter will get the Symbiote Suit, giving him even more alien ways to win in fights. Symbiote Strike will lunge towards enemies, grouping them up and then flinging them into the air. We also gotta point out that this is one of the coolest looking abilities in the game. And finally, rounding Peter off is Symbiote Yank, which sees the Symbiote reach out and grab enemies, pulling them towards you and then slamming them onto the ground. Excellent for crowd control and grouping up enemies. Miles' skill tree is a bit more straightforward than Peter's as he's still only rocking the awesome Venom powers. No, not that Venom, the Sparky Venom. To even begin this skill tree, you'll need to grab Venom Dash, which sees Miles dash toward an enemy and throw them with a burst of Venom Shock. A great early upgrade you can add to this is Venom Double Dash. No, not that Double Dash. This skill essentially gives you a free Venom Dash just by pressing the buttons again once the first move is done. It's a no-brainer. And finally, Venom Jump rules as it will lift your enemies into the air and stun them. A stunned enemy is the best enemy, and don't worry if there isn't a huge group around. If you grab the Venom Jump Mastery skill, it'll recharge the ability to 50% after use if the jump only grabbed one enemy. Your gadgetry is vital in keeping combat flowing smoothly and preventing you from being overwhelmed. As such, a key skill to unlock super early is combo resupply, which is pretty early in the shared skill tree. This adds a chance for a free gadget shot to become available at the end of a basic four hit melee combo. This means that every time you execute a basic string of attacks, you'll have a chance at obtaining a free use of any of your currently unlocked gadgets. You'll want to keep an eye out for this indicator though, as you'll only have a limited amount of time to use the gadget before it disappears and returns to its normal usage cost. 
The web whip ability in the shared skill tree is also particularly valuable as you'll be able to hold triangle and then tap R1 against an enemy with any weapon and you'll rip it right out of their hands and slam it back to them as a projectile. This doubles up as a way of dealing damage while also removing ranged or more dangerous melee threats from the equation. Another duo of abilities to consider is Bounce Up and Air Swap on the shared skill tree, which allows you to rebound a floating enemy back into the air and spring dodge behind an airborne enemy, both of which add a large amount of flexibility to your air combos and make staying in the air for longer much more viable. Keeping your enemy in the air pairs well with some of the damage and focus suit tech this time around, as a lot of those upgrades depend on you fighting mid-air. For example, Air Marshal in the damage section increases your damage while mid-air, and Aerial Focus, which admittedly is at the end of the focus section, but it's still important to keep in mind, increases your focus regeneration while performing air attacks. A little further down the shared skill tree is Gadget Resupply, which resupplies a gadget shot upon using a finisher. This one skill becomes ridiculously powerful if you are being effective in combat in using gadgets and managing slash reserving focus to perform finishers on the right enemies at the right time. By doing so, you'll essentially have a constant flow of gadgets to use and finishers to deal out with little to no delay between the two. And those were just some of the skills you should be on the lookout for when first starting up Spider-Man 2. Of course, as you progress, you'll get more comfortable in your own playstyle, and you'll start to figure out which skills work best for you, so you'll know what to prioritize. Anyone seen some robbers who are looking to lose a fight? Also, while grabbing skills you want first is always recommended, don't stress about skill point shortage, as the game will give you enough points to max out all three skill trees eventually. For more tips like these, make sure to head on over to IGN's growing Spider-Man 2 wiki. And of course, for everything else video games, stick with IGN. Uh.